Hey guys, I know it's been a minute since you guys have heard from me, but uh, had a small shipping delay with a bunch of stuff here. Anyway, uh, I have here a 120 watt Suzuki folding solar suitcase. I'll let you guys see the information about it. And forgive the vehicle noise here, but I'm outside my front yard. Uh, anyway, this thing's pretty neat. I only have one seeming complaint here. This, this lovely little flap flips over, covers the solar panels. They usually just solve that by taking this and folding it back a little bit. Uh, it's got two USB outputs in a little pouch back here. As you can see I have one USB cord. And then I have the barrel connector uh, hanging out of the back side here. Running over to this white cord that's here on the ground. Go over here. Now this does not come with it, however, <clears throat> as an extension because this cord here is only about three feet long, which plugs into the back of the solar panel and goes to a set of connectors, isn't long enough, and this is one of the other adapters for my Yeti Goal Zero here, uh, which goes to Anderson connectors. Here again, it's about three foot long, doesn't really get very far. Uh, made a connector here to uh, connect the Anderson and then plug this into the goal zero. My only other complaint with this in some form is that it does not charge the goal zero completely. Now, if we take a look here, notice the battery is at 12.6. This is about as far as the panel will charge my goal zero. Now I've tried a couple of different things to make it work, but we'll plug it in here. And uh, you'll see it's putting out some power. Now, on a nice sunny day, which this is not, <clears throat> you'll see over here it's fairly cloudy, but still receiving a charge. <clears throat> and I'm doing this at low power output because I'm sure somebody will say, well, it's almost charged, you know. Probably is just shutting off on the inside. No, the Yeti is not doing it because I can plug in another solar panel I have. For example, a new power solar panel that I have that's 50 watts or 100 watts, and it'll continue to charge up to 13.6. However, if we watch here, it'll probably do it in just a moment. Um, this thing shuts off, and I think the output from the solar panel is actually regulated in this. Even if I connect it straight to another battery that I have that I use, it also shuts off at around 12.6, 12.7, and stops charging. <clears throat> now, for AGM batteries, this is not a full voltage. For a regular lead acid, it's close enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, as soon as this happens here, I'll uh, show you guys. But uh, the other plug you get with this actually has an SAE cord. And uh, this is another one that I use to charge other batteries that don't have plugs on them. But uh, otherwise, the panel's pretty good. Uh, they don't claim waterproof. It's water resistant. The stands that are on the back of it over there holding it up are kind of a cheap, like, carbon fiber and, uh, like, canvas material. They don't do bad. It does blow over in the wind if you got good enough winds, which is kind of a downside, but it does function. Um, overall, I think for the $130 I personally paid for it, it's pretty good. Uh, Swokey's not sponsoring this, although it'd be nice if I could get some sponsors. Uh, gladly test out your products and give you an honest review. They will be honest. No sugar coating, no. Uh, hype or anything you know we'll we'll test it for what it's worth and see how it goes um, also another point I've tried testing on this is that even after the solar panel shuts off when this hits a certain voltage I can plug in the charger over here which I have on here to show you um, for the goal zero and it will continue charging even after the solar panel is shut off so hopefully here in just a moment, uh, this thing will 
go through and shut down here. I'd like to get it on camera, but if I have to, to keep the video short, I might just stop this for a minute and go on about stuff. Um, we'll give it just a second here and see what happens. Okay, so real quick, just for proof of concept here, I have a watt meter to try to get in on here. As we see, the panel is still producing voltage. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but it is trying to charge. It's still producing voltage. However, the goal zero, which is plugged into the other end here, I'll show it in its entirety, is not charging. And if I unplug it, plug it back in, it says no. Now, cue up the display. 12.7 volts it has shut off and as you can see it's still forcing power now that is the solar panel still running down over there so it no longer wishes to charge now if I turn on the inverter see it drops a little bit it's still not charging but still producing power. Now on the other hand, if I take a load and uh, plug it in, we'll see if we can get it to queue back up. Yeah, I guess it's not going to. All right, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug in the goal zero charger here. As you saw, the sun was bright, so it's not a, a cloud issue at the moment. We'll unplug this, turn off the inverter, plug in the goal zero charger. And I have a power inverter with another camping box that I've had previously out running. I don't know if you guys can see the little green light on the goal zero charger. But as you can tell, when you fire up the Eagle Zero Charger, it still charges. Which means that the battery charging process is incomplete. Now, otherwise, this may not affect everybody out camping. It's still a fairly full charge. Uh, but it is kind of a pain because the battery is not fully charged. So, for the most part, if you're camping, this would work out. At least, you know, for a 90% charge. Uh, 80 or 90, somewhere in there. I mean, it's still definitely usable while camping. Now, if I continuously have a load drawing on this, as long as I'm drawing more of a load that doesn't allow it to get to 12.7, it will continue to output power. However, if it crosses 12.7, it shuts off. And you can probably see it now better. It's still producing power, just when you unplug this, of course your my inverter shut off, and plug it into there, it still says no. Now, there are times that it, when it is charging, and uh, I'll see if I can get it to do it here real quick, uh, when you have it plugged in in other forms here, wait a minute, hang on just a second. Oh, look at that. We're going to charge for half a second. <laughs> yeah, it's not outputting much. Of course, the sun's kind of dark right now. Maybe if the sun kicks back up here, we'll, uh, we'll see if it'll continue to charge. But it is producing power. Like I said, we'll see if the sun kicks back up here. But I think we might actually hit a shutoff point here in just a moment if the sun does pick back up. When it's cloudy like this, it will charge for a moment or two longer, but it's not perfect. Like I said, I'm thinking it's it's got some internal regulation in the panel that's doing it. Um, which isn't bad, because if you were using a regular lead-acid battery, it's, it's probably close enough to full. Um, 
I know that when Hobotech was doing a review on a similar panel for a 100 watt panel, his seemed to have no regulation because it would charge up to 15 or 16 volts under load and that's overcharging your battery for the most part. Um, you know, left unattended, that will ruin your battery. However, if you're watching it, probably not. Uh, we'll see if this goes off here in just a second. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it here and uh, I'll be right back. Well, guys, I have a minor problem here. Well, it's not really a problem, but I'm going to show you this here. Okay, so at the moment, we are pushing towards 13 volts, which is nice. It's the highest reading I've gotten this thing to actually hit. You see we're pulling about 6.3 watts, just under half an amp. However, uh, I decided I was going to bypass the charger in here because it's the Yeti charger says just low watts. It's not really pulling anything. I'll show you here real quick but we're still producing some power here uh, let me just flip this around here but take note the lovely sky yeah I'm going to get wet now if I plug this in to the Yeti charger you see it's displaying not much of anything and We're trying to work, but we're not really working. It's probably going to time out and tell me there's no wattage. Uh -oh. And people got to race. Ah, yes. The lovely Akron. Alright, so we are pulling apparently 1 watt by 1 to 0 watts by what goal 0 says. However, we're still pulling six and a half here which is the inefficiency of the pwm charger but when you look at the sky that's not a bad number uh most i've actually seen through the meter here is about 95 watts on a great sunny day and it charges almost about six amps now i don't remember the exact number that came up it was like 5.89 something similar it was doing pretty good. Oh, look at that. Low watts. And, just for get some shiggles here, folks. Plug this back into the battery port. Now, I know Goal Zero says you're not supposed to charge through this port. I do. I'm not one to exactly follow the rules. But you still see we're putting in about 6.1 watts. At about half an amp, which is nice. Like I said, considering that mess of the sky. Anyway, guys, uh, for the most part, I'd recommend this panel. Like I said, there's no endorsements here, but uh, I'm going to take it out and use it for camping here and uh, look and see what happens. I'll give you guys another update on this. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the quarantine. Sorry we're all stuck in the house, but uh, I guess in my case... The weather is just not going to let me outside in the first place, even though I'm on my porch. Anyway, guys, stay safe and uh, enjoy. I'm sorry the videos aren't coming out as quick as I'd like them to, but uh, sadly, shipping on stuff isn't going as well as we'd like it to. Anyway, guys, take care. Have a great day.